I tend to start the broadcast a couple days a week like this, but today it is particularly true. The news, the amount of it and how over the top important it is, is simply mind blowing. So I will do the very best job I can to cover all of this as best I can. Saturday morning, I started getting phone calls, text messages, emails congratulating me from syndicated talk show hosts, authors, researchers. And I just didn't get it, quite frankly. It was like, I used to think you were crazy, and now they admit the Queen of England's a Nazi. And they've released the photo. It's been in the history books, just not pop history, that her father was to be made the king of Europe. Not just the king of England. Over an EU that Hitler was obsessed with royals. Edward VIII was a German prince and a German king from Germany. His cousin was Prince Bernhard, the consort to the Queen of the Netherlands, who founded the Bilderberg Group. And the media has now spun this like, Queen's very angry, somebody's going to get arrested for releasing this. Now, you could say, hey, she's a little girl hiling Hitler with the Queen and the King. That's not the issue. Everything we're under today... The eugenics, the fluoride in the water, all of it. The EU was a Nazi project. NASA was founded by Nazis. Planned Parenthood basically founded the Nazis. And I want to explain this. This is not a Nazi conspiracy. The Nazis are just a German model of what we're under today. We are not under the German model. But the model that it's modeled after, we are under. So please, everybody's just freaking out, going, you said Prince Bernhard and Prince Philip and Queen Elizabeth II are Nazis. And we thought, I made a film about it. Martial law. An hour of the three-hour film is about that. It's a known fact. And then they just said, oh, he stepped down as king because at the end of World War II because of an American woman he wanted to marry. And of course, he was the uncle to Queen Elizabeth. Her, her, her brother was then installed when he stepped down. It all just gives me a complete headache. It just it, People say, why? It's all coming out. No, it's not. No, it's not. Prince Philip... In fact, I forgot to have you guys do this. It was in the news Monday. Kurt Nemo wrote about it. I think the headline was, Prince Philip yet again shows his disdain for humanity. He's constantly out giving speeches saying, I want to kill everybody, and we're getting the bioweapons ready to wipe everyone out. They're not playing games. The Royal Commission on Population from 1949, Queen Elizabeth's father, who was also a hyper-fascist eugenicist, brother to Edward VIII, Put out a commission report that I've actually read. It's about 400 pages long. Got a copy of it around here somewhere. Got it from the University of Texas 20 years ago. And in it, they lay out the whole globalist plan. So in a way, I'm cursed. Because I have the blueprint. I have the attack profile. I know everything they're going to do. I'm here just warning people. And still, folks will not believe me about how much trouble we're in. So that's one article out of no exaggeration, 200 or more, all of them over the top, all of them insane, all of them very revealing. Tell your friends and family to tune in right now on your local Ammon Adam stations or the free streams at InfoWars.com forward slash show. You are the resistance. So it came out over the weekend in British newspapers that the Queen of England was photographed hiling Hitler. And her grandsons have been caught in Nazi uniforms. And the media is now obsessing over this and saying they should arrest whoever released the photos. It's one thing to dress up in a Nazi uniform at Halloween. That's not what they're doing. They are 
Romanian slash German royalty. There's nothing British about the House of Windsor. That's a PR name. And the entire current world system is based on a proto-Nazi science called eugenics. And it is the governing force on the planet today. So it's not a Nazi conspiracy. It is a eugenics, scientific, technological elite that we're facing that have a plan. And everyone on the planet might want to get informed about what the global rulers are into. Now, I'm not going to cover that until the next hour, and I'm going to spend 10, 15 minutes on it. But the palace has scolded the Sun newspaper for publishing the Queen's childhood Nazi salute image with the King of England, her uncle, Edward VIII. So they're turning the story around, acting like, you know, it's terrible this has been released. The London Guardian has the headline, Royals told open archives on family ties to Nazi regime. Well, you know who else worked with the Nazis, and that was the Saudis. In fact, the father of the current Saudi king was a big Nazi, but that's okay because he's got billions of dollars. Uh, and Yahoo News, anger as Saudi king takes over entire French beach, has the government order a large section of the French Riviera closed for his highness so he can look out his window and not see people. I'm not joking. We'll look at royalty and the larger issues in the second hour on this live Sunday worldwide transmission, the 19th day of July, 2015. We're here every weekday, 12 noon to 3 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Central. I guess that'd be 9 a.m. to noon Pacific, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Mountain. And we come back Sundays, 4 to 6 Central, Infowars.com forward slash show has the free audio feeds and, of course, the free video feed if you're a radio listener and wish to share that feed with friends and family and hopefully uh, wake them up. Let me do this. Let me now get into the really big news. Just, 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 just list what we're about to get into for you here. Pentagon recruiting centers... To remain unarmed and unguarded, recruiters told not to wear uniforms. FBI says no signs of ISIS link to marine killings. Also, no sign the sun came up this morning. But MSNBC's Mitchell says that it must have been a right winger because Tennessee's pro-gun. So it's not a radicalized Muslim connected to ISIS, even though he was on record. No, it's the right wing's fault. ISIS used chemical weapons against Kurds. Chattanooga Shooter's family says he suffered from depression. Yeah, it looks like he was on psychotropics. That just added to it. They always are. ISIS sets up stronghold in heart of Europe and is allowed to. Yep, the West is doing that. That's all coming up. Meanwhile, Wesley Clark, former head of NATO, top general, calls for interning disloyal Americans. And he's not talking about radical Muslims, folks. He's talking about the Tea Party, gun owners, veterans, conservatives, because beware, they're going to build a police state in the name of countering radical foreign Islamicists, and then it will be used on the general public as it already is. And by the way, I did a video following the twisted logic of the fascist left on Friday. Well, it was live radio slash TV broadcast, but the video is up on Infowars.com titled Deport All Muslims. Uh, you know I'm not what they call an Islamophobe. I, I don't believe that all Muslims are bad people. Um, my, my issue is that there is political correctness run amok here where they won't even call Islamic terror in Garland or in Chattanooga, whether it's in Texas or Tennessee, they won't call it that. But when a drugged up nut with a rebel flag goes in and shoots nine innocent people, we're told all whites are to blame. And that the Second Amendment's to blame and that the battle flag needs to be taken down. Just because a few Klan people have adopted it. So if you're going to have some Muslims running around engaging in terrorism and horrible acts, then do we blame all Muslims? Do we take down all Muslim symbols? And I knew that the left, because they're not the left, they're, they're just a bunch of criminal gang members, 
would take it out of context. And sure enough, I've seen reports and stuff saying Alex Jones calls for closing all mosques, arresting all Muslims and deporting them. When I was saying, yes, and let's ban a Ford truck if someone ever runs over someone with a Ford product. Let's not blame the killer. Let's blame the Ford truck. And let's ban all the guns if somebody uses a gun in a crime. I, I was not being serious. And this is where it does become sickening mental illness and satire. When the controlled left cannot face the illustration I put out here following their twisted logic, they have to then double down and say, yes, Alex Jones wants to deport all the Muslims. No, I said, according to your logic... That's what should be done. But because Wesley Clark is a leftist, he's allowed to basically say, we got the clip coming up, that we should intern in the U.S. and Europe. He said it on MSNBC, videos on Infowars.com. We should intern all Muslims that have any leanings towards this. But that's okay because he's leftist. It's very, very important we do all that, I guess. Uh, then coming up, the really big news. Obama collecting personal data for a secret race database. New York Post. We already knew this was going on, but it's okay he's data mining your medical records and IRS and everything else illegally because he says it's to fight racism. Unprecedented collection of sensitive data on Americans prying into most personal info at most local levels, all for purposes of racial and economic justice. Yes, and like out of some bizarre pipe dream last week, he ordered everyone to integrate immediately or there'll be fines on local cities. And some cities are looking at not even, I guess, letting you build a house unless you racially are different so that it'll mix things up. And in Austin, they won't give you a building permit if you're going to put a fence up around your house or a gate. They say, we want, I know because I'm building a house, a small house, a house in town. Oh, sorry, we're not going to give you a building permit if you put a gate up on the front. We want the community to be open. We don't want fences. Oh, really? I own this piece of property, but I can't put a fence up? What? Where's the law? Oh, we're just not going to give you a building permit. Really? Uh, I said, where's the law? We're not going to give you a building permit. Then I'm going to sue you. By the way, my lawyer is the guy that sues the city and wins when you pull similar stuff. And you know that. In fact, I need to twist Eric Taub's arm because he said he'd come on about zoning issues where he sued the city in won a bunch and when nobody else has. And then I keep forgetting to call him and actually get him on. Let's get him on this week or call him and see if we can get him on and come in and talk about it. But, I, I mean, this is just how it affects everyone at every level. It's just so crazy. No one tells you when they sell you a piece of land that, oh, there's not a rule or a law it, 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 you know, in this neighborhood where everybody's got fences and gates on their houses so your dogs don't get out and stuff. No, we're sorry. The city won't let you build now because we just said so talking out of our rear end because we're God. And just like the president does everything now off the top of his head, stroke of a pen, law of the land, like Paul Bogala bragged about, kind of cool. Now they just do this. So that's all coming up. And then O'Malley... The Democratic presidential candidate apologizes for saying all lives matter. Report, Rand Paul calls for scrutiny of Muslims. Defiant, Trump refuses to apologize to McCain, saying he's no hero. But Trump didn't attack him properly. McCain's real record is incredible. He's part of the Keating Five, all this corruption, anti-gun. But forget that. He was actually a trustee at the Hanoi Hilton. So Obama illegally... Has the federal government and the NSA with your health records, your test scores, uh, your purchase records, local government records, all of it, databasing you, part of Jade Helm, into economic, cultural, and racial blocks to then computerize it and war game how to control populations. And, and we've been telling you that for the last few months about Jade Helm, that it's just a giant computer simulation with real troops on the ground practicing takeovers of local communities uh, and testing media response. So they come out with a PSYOP and say that we say it's imminent martial law takeover and quote me in the New York Times without linking to it, uh, that I say they're going to kill everybody. I mean, just totally made up. This is how they operate. 
But here it is in the New York Post. Obama collecting personal data for a secret race database. A key part of Obama's legacy will be the Fed's unprecedented collection of sensitive data on Americans by race. The government is prying into your most personal information at the local level, all for the purpose of racial and economic justice. Unbeknownst to most Americans, Obama's racial bean counters are furiously mining data on their health, home loans, credit cards, places at work, neighborhoods, even how their kids are disciplined in school. That's why they ask those questions to the pediatrician, all to document inequities between minorities and whites to then hype up race war. There are Orwellian styled stockpile of statistics, including a vast permanent network of discrimination databases, which Obama already is using to make disparate impact cases against banks that don't make enough prime loans to minorities, schools that suspend too many blacks, cities that don't offer enough Section 8 and other low income housing for minorities, and employers who turn down African Americans for jobs due to criminal backgrounds. Big Brother Barack wants the database operational before he leaves office, as much of the data will then be posted online. So civil rights attorneys, urban activist groups will be able to exploit them to show patterns of racial disparities and segregation, even if no other evidence of discrimination exists. Yeah. How about your parents had you work hard and you were successful? I mean, that'd be like saying we're data mining sports scores in the NFL to show a predominantly uh, large number of blacks in starting positions and making most of the money. This is obviously racist. We must stop and have quotas in the NFL that it be divided by race. But look out, they may actually do that. No, it's just because culturally it's pushed that that's a good place, I guess, for folks to try to be wealthy and successful is in the football arena. And then you can argue different genetic differences, predisposed to be successful at sports. Should blacks, say, be given drugs so that they are more equal and not as successful at, say, the 100-meter dash? Because we've got to have unity. We've got to have equality. I, I mean, I'm not even joking. That's where all of this ends up going. And this gets into the other issue of why are some countries different culturally than others? Why do some countries not have resources but are more successful than countries that do have resources? And it goes to the cultural experiences of that people, of that nation. And now we're being absolutely subdivided and destroyed. And it doesn't matter if globalist forces are conquering your country as long as you can racially divide and conquer the public. And that brings us to this latest video and audio that I want to play some of here in a moment. O'Malley apologizes for saying all lives matter at liberal conference. He's way more even socialist than Hillary, not, not as much as Bernie Sanders. Ultra bleeding heart, but that isn't enough. A group of mainly black women stormed the stage, took it over. He gave them the stage and then was booed as he left. Democratic presidential candidate Martin O'Malley apologized on Saturday for saying all lives matter. They were shouting black lives matter. And he said black lives, white lives, all lives. Oh, no. While discussing police violence against African-Americans with liberal demonstrators. Several dozen demonstrators interrupted the former Maryland governor while he was speaking at a Netroots Nation conference gathering liberal activists demanding that he address the criminal justice and police brutality. Then they shouted Black Lives Matter, a rallying cry of protest that broke out for several uh, black Americans were killed at the hands of police in recent months. O'Malley responded, Black Lives Matter, White Lives Matter, All Lives Matter, which enraged everybody. I mean, this is a socialist wealth redistributor who, who does nothing all day but basically call for more division in, the, in this whole race-based economy, and that wasn't enough. So let's go ahead and play the audio and video of this piece. Every life matters, and that is why this issue is so important. Black lives matter, white lives matter, all lives matter. Black lives matter. White lives matter. All and look, lives he's matter. up there with that illegal alien host on from MTV that has the show White People where whites are all basically evil demons and are the reason there's problems. See, this is so racist, so racially based for all the minorities that are really the majority. 
I'm not saying most minorities are racist, but they're trying to make minorities racist. See, notice I got up here and I criticized Edward VIII, who was a Nazi and who wanted to set up a world government and to put poison in the food and water to slowly destroy the inferior races in his view. I mean, that's hardcore. But see, the Queen of England's off limits to all the leftist and people because that's the real power structure. Meanwhile, you get all these Hispanic and black activists and others who inherently say white people are bad. My God, 7% of the world population. And you can't argue out of Western culture so much innovation has come. There's barbarism, oppression all over the world. But you point at the problems in the West and act like it's the source of all evil. It's obnoxious. And so even at a race-based cult meeting hosted by the Sumner Redstone MTV illegal alien, it's not good enough when the Democratic politician gets up there and prostrates himself down, worshiping. They finally just sh shouted him out and he left. This is what it comes down to. This is the cult of just guilt and beating people over the head. This is how they control prisons, putting everybody in the Hispanic area, the black area, the white area, the Asian area. Jose Antonio Vargas, the illegal alien with the MTV show, running around about the evil white people. He's hosting it there with O'Malley, and it's not good enough. This is how this country operates. This is how sickening the situation has gotten. Now, we're going to go to break, and we're going to come back because it's it's... It's illustrative of what we face as a culture and as a society. And I'm going to drill into the fact that you got a guy that travels back and forth to Kuwait. His dad's under investigation by the FBI for ties to extremist groups. He goes and shoots and kills five Marines now, wounds three more, dies in a gun battle with police. And as soon as it came out he was a Muslim, they removed the terrorism designation and said it's not terrorism, no connection to radicalism. We'll explain why. Mohammed Yusuf Abdulaziz went and shot up two different Marine Corps recruiting stations last week. And as soon as the media announced it was a white person, they then said it's being investigated as an act of terrorism. And I said, watch on air. I said, if it turns out that it's connected to radical Islam, they will then remove that designation. They've now done that. And that's because the president won't even call radical Islam terror, radical Islam terror. He won't even say ISIS is radical Islamic terror. Blowing up churches, killing hundreds of thousands of people, murdering non-radical Muslims with our government caught funding it. That's why he said missiles won't stop ISIS. Well, yeah, because it's a proxy army of Saudi Arabia that has trillions of dollars and has bought off the West. You want public beaches shut down in the south of France in the summer during French vacation? When the king shows up, they shut down miles of beach so he doesn't have to look at you out of his penthouse. That's what a joke this country is. And this guy is from just south of there, Kuwait. And I know it's hospitality. All right, come and kill a bunch of us. Roll out the red carpet. That's hospitality. I want to be politically correct. And he's obviously an ISIS sympathizer, been traveling a bunch to Kuwait. Talked about on his website, on Facebook, submitting to Allah, and then, you know, doing what, what it takes and that life's hellish. And then he goes and kills five people, shoots three more before the police take him out. And they actually went on MSNBC, we have the clip, and said it's because Tennessee's pro-gun and right wing, it's, he was a right winger. With no evidence, and all the evidence shows it's Islamic terror. But because you're not supposed to say that, you don't. Just like it's now seen as racially cool for black criminals to attack white people. That's a known saying in hip-hop and the new Black Panther Party is don't loot and kill and drug in your own neighborhood. Do it to whites or do it to Asians. For whatever reason, there's this thing about going after the Asians even more. And it's racist. And the 
more and more black people are being forged basically into the new Klan. And they got Ford Foundation and Democratic Party and George Soros funding. It's disgusting. And the majority of black people obviously are not evil, hateful, racist. But there's an attempt to force them and radicalize them into this. And it's the same story. Pentagon recruiting centers to remain unarmed. Started under Clinton, expanded under Obama. Sitting ducks. We can trust you to go fight for the country. Whether the wars are good or bad, it doesn't matter. We trust you with guns. It's like trusting airline pilots to fly aircraft. That are, you know, giant missiles that can kill thousands. But you can't trust them to have a gun in the cockpit. Of course, they did until right before 9-11. Recruiting centers to remain unarmed. Unguarded recruiters told to not wear uniforms. The Hill newspaper, no sign of ISIS linked to marine killings. Authorities are declining to link the shootings in Chattanooga, Tennessee that killed four Marines, it's now five, to Islamic State in Iraq and Syria, despite suggestion from the House Homeland Security Committee chairman that the government was inspired by a terror group. And then here's, I'm not going to play the clip. You want to see it, it's on Infowars.com. MSNBC's Mitchell was Chattanooga shooter just a southern gun nut. And they go on to agree on the show that, yes, that's what it was. He was a southerner from Kuwait, a Sunni with connections to ISIS. So it was, it was the NRA's fault. ISIS formerly al-Qaeda in Iraq and Syria, got caught again using chemical weapons against the Kurds, Monitor saying this is the first documented case of IS using chemical weapons against the Kurds. For it was, uh, this is RT reporting it, Islamic State, formerly uh, ISIL or IS militants, used poison gas while shelling a Kurdish village in late June, UK-based Syrian Observatory for Human Rights reports. The UN, uh, of course, has said that they believe they've been using it against Syria as well. I'm sure that's the Tea Party's fault as well. Uh, Chattanooga shooter family says he suffered from depression, the Telegraph, and was on some type of psychotropic drugs. Well, I mean, that makes perfect sense. Most of IS is recruited out of the West. They are mentally ill. So hopeless, desperate failures who want to be somebody. And so they then get radicalized online, go out and do this. And, and again... I'm the guy that wrote the book on exposing false flag inside jobs. 9-11 was Saudi run with Western traders standing down bare minimum. We documented it. We've been vindicated. It's now basically been declassified where the 29 pages have been leaked. Not fully declassified, but leaked. Senator Graham, Congressman Jones, and others. But ISIS is a multi-hundred thousand person PR recruiting operation with Western backing NATO funding as a Saudi proxy army, they're real. And they are super in vogue with trendies. Trendies will go out and find a Mao or a linen shirt. You know, they'll go to rallies and yell and scream about how they love abortion and killing babies. I mean, you've seen the footage we've shown of hardcore leftists. I mean, they're just basically Satanists. They'll scream, hell, Satan. I mean, it's, it's so bizarre, but it's real. It's like you're, you're, at, you're like, is this fake? I mean, uh, and, they're, and they're like, no. I mean, the, the, but, but the newest thing, even if you're not Islamic, is to join with it because bags on women's heads, chopping off their genitals, uh, you know, in, keeping them in slave pits, not letting them drive is like, it's ultra sexy because it's anti-Western. See, none of this is actually, it's anti-Renaissance. It's anti-Renaissance. It's anti-beauty, it's anti-literature, it's anti-reason. They're now saying reason is racist at the University of what, Wisconsin? That it's a white construct and must be overthrown? It's basically insane asylum. Because reason is in Asian cultures and in Mesoamerican. I mean, I mean, reason is everywhere under different names. By the way, if you think I'm joking, it's a Daily Caller article. Professor, reason itself is a white male construct. Okay, if you say so. So there you go. But another shooter, it looks like, on drugs. Big surprise there. <clears throat> Meanwhile, ISIS has set up a stronghold in the heart of Europe. London Mirror 
Same folks exposing the Queen for being a Nazi is exposing that. Terrorists are secretly buying up land in an isolated village surrounded by deep woodland. Islamic State has established a stronghold in mainland Europe. Sunday Mirror investigates. Terrorists are secretly buying land in an isolated village. Islamic State established a stronghold in mainland Europe. They investigate. Terrorists are secretly buying land in an isolated village. Security services in the area of Bosnia is used by ISIS training camp that could be a base for devastating attacks in the West. Well, yeah, it was Serbia, but now that area is part of Bosnia and part of Albania. And who do you think the Albanians work for? They're Islamic. And they are radicalized. And they are the KLA. So there you go. Now I'm done covering that. It's just that it hit me yesterday morning. I almost came in and did a special report, but I saved it till now. That that's how controlled CNN, MSNBC, and others are. Is that you got a guy from Kuwait whose dad's under FBI investigation for ties to these groups. And he goes and kills five Marines and wounds three more. And talks about, you know, he's going to do something big for Islam on his Facebook. And then they say, no connection to Islam. And then you get the drugged up, on an amnesiac, moron, 22-year-old up in Charleston who goes and kills nine people. And it's a terrible, heinous event. And quite frankly, I think it is terrorism to just do stuff for pure terror and try to start a race war. He said politically you want to start a race war. Well, if you do something for political reasons that's terrifying, it's called terror. That's the old definition. So both are terrorism. But you don't blame Robert E. Lee for it, the former head of the northern military. You don't blame the Confederate battle flag as a bunch of ignorant people think it means something and, and this moron used it. So that's why I said by that extension, they can't have their cake and eat it too. You can't ban and, 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 and you know the rebel flag and say all whites are to blame for what, what a white guy does. And then a radical Muslim goes out and does it. And you don't even blame radical Islam. You don't even mention it. I mean, that, that, that is cult-like control. About a week and a half ago, new video footage got released. And first denied, later confirmed and defended. Then they retracted that and threw their minion under the bus. The director of medical services for Planned Parenthood nationally, sitting around over a lavish meal at a restaurant with a hidden camera on her, talking about how they like to not chop the babies up in too small a parts so they can sell the organs. And I just wanted to tell all the ghouls that are into abortion, you can get hundreds of thousands of dollars gestating a baby up to nine months having a partial birth and selling those goods. I mean, why give this lady all the cash? <laughs> and it's now started a feeding frenzy over the money. That's one way to bring down these uh, these these devils, for lack of a better word, uh, is uh, get them in a fight over the flesh prices. It's like folks arguing over fish prices at a fish market. See, don't even... Don't even debate the humans being chopped up or killed or that, or they could be adopted. Let folks know that when they're going out and getting abortions that the vampires are running off with the body to sell it like so many grave robbers. See how truth is over the top, so much more hardcore than fiction. Truth is light years more wild than any fanciful imagination of a gifted science fiction writer. Who could make it up that by the 1850s a eugenics plan was adopted by the German royal family that ruled the United Kingdom and much of the world, the British Empire, and that they themselves weren't even German, but were Transylvanian, the direct line of Vlad the Impaler, Count Dracula. And that they were involved in deep occult rituals and Satan worshippers and pedophiles. And that they funded Adolf Alois Hitler and the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute with Thomas Watson of IBM. And the Rockefeller Foundation and the Rockefeller family. And J.P. Morgan. And then they set up the Germans and double-crossed them, bringing that down and then adopting the very program on a planetary scale.
but using not overt racism, white-based or Aryan-based, but based in divide and conquer along racial lines. A twisted version. The Nazis talked about how would 60 million Germans, and they estimated other Aryan populations, maybe 300 million, dominate several billion non-whites. And they said, well, buy off their leaders, put in systems, have public health systems, and package food with chemicals and additives to slowly brain damage them and put them into a servile position and hydrofluorosilicic acid in the water, which the Nazis learned about from uh, Lenin and were putting in their water. Then, of course, Lenin died and Stalin took over. I mean, that's in Pulitzer Prize winning books about putting the fluoride in the water. And I mean, I sit here reading the books, knowing it, understanding it. And I got all these calls Saturday. I'm going to cover this some in the next hour. And text messages. Bzz, 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 text messages. Talk show host out of New York. Talk show host out of Austin. Bzz, bzz, man cow. Text message. Bzz. Man, you said this years ago. I thought you were crazy. Bzz. Phone rings. Cousin calls me. Yeah, you're right. I thought you were crazy saying they were all Nazis. They write books about planetary government exterminating 90% of us. Prince... Philip, the father of Prince Charles, cousins to the founder of the Bilderberg Group, Prince Bernhard. I mean, it's just you can't make this stuff up. Just type in Edward VIII, Hitler. I mean, you got a bunch of weird Transylvanians. By the way, I first heard about this from Fritz Springmeier. I didn't believe it like 18 years ago. And then it came out on Ancestry.com, CNN, you name it, that indeed that they're not really even German. They're mainly Transylvanian, tracing their line to Vlad the Impaler. Then they show on the news how Prince Charles looks just like Vlad the Impaler. And then he's moved there and lives there six months out of the year at Count Dracula Castle, at Dragon Castle. Prince Charles lives in Dragon Castle in Transylvania on the side of a mountain. And, of course, the allegory is these people will grab your kids during the night and kill them. And then you read about Vlad the Impaler's royal family line. He had, like, granddaughters that would bathe in baby blood and stuff. I mean, how do you think they got these legends going? By the way, if you're not a new listener, I'm not making any of this stuff up. I mean, you, you cannot make the magnitude of this up. And these are the people giving you GMO that every major GMO line that's BT-based and many others sterilize 100, it's about 99%, but close to 100 within three generations in rats and in guinea pigs and in other rodents. And of course, why do they test on rodents? Because physiologically, drugs have the same effect on rodents and pigs. They believe we're more closely related to them than even chimpanzees. Whatever science is behind it, that's why they test on those. And that's what they're doing to us. So the House of Dracula controlled with the Rothschilds the entire global empire. And now they're setting up a world government, imploding the nation states, flooding the first world nations with giant immigrant populations to drive down wages as economic warfare to annihilate any middle class. And then they're energizing all the new immigrant majorities into hardcore, fervent, racially-based groups, foaming at the mouth, hating white people, which will then drive whites into compact uh, centers in rural areas and racially aligned in a giant prison planet where we're all divided by race and controlled and refereed by the globalists. I mean, just type in, punch up my screen for TV viewers. I just typed in Edward VIII Hitler, and it's got him at the start of World War II with Joseph Goebbels. Uh, it's got him with Hitler. Uh, it's got him reviewing the German troops. It's got him saying he won't abdicate because he was a Nazi. It's king of England. And then later they claim it was because of his wife. He stepped down and they make movies about the king's speech, about how he's liberal and stutters and how cute he is. They're the Saxe Coburg Gothas, folks. Which, again, traces its lineage back to Vlad the Impaler. By the way, if a new listener just tuned in, I'm going to give them the actual headline. If you type in Prince Charles uh, uh, lives in Transylvania, now Romania. And, of course, the villagers back then said, don't get too near the castle. They'll grab you and kill you. 
That's where the legends came from. They said, they'll grab you and kill you. And it was true. They'd rape you. They'd murder you. They'd drink your blood. They'd bathe in your blood. Uh, but by the way, this is mainline history about the dragon family. Inside Prince Charles' rustic Romanian retreats, how you can stay at and it goes, Transylvania farmhouses in the forest of his ancestor, Count Dracula, Daily Mail. That's just some whitewash article. He actually bought Dracula Castle. <laughs> Who can make this up? And then he sits around lobbying all day to cut our carbon and starve us and how we shouldn't have anything and how British pensioners shouldn't be able to have any gas in the winter when they heat hundreds, hundreds, hundreds of palaces. The Queen has something like 60-something palaces. Windsor Palace is like a giant complex. They have whole contained villages with tens of thousands of people living in them, like back in rustic times inside England. I've seen documentaries about it. Everything's organic. Everything's the opposite of what they're doing to us. And meanwhile, Wesley Clark wants to, uh, he implies, put all the Muslims basically in FEMA camps. I'm going to play that when we come back. Wesley Clark calls for interning disloyal Americans. John Bound's done three extremely powerful reports for the show that we're going to be premiering next hour as well. Um, Trump's in trouble for criticizing McCain, saying he's no hero. I I've had the military people on. It's been in the news. Not just Keating 5 and corruption, but McCain was like a trustee. Reportedly got women, food, everything was taken care of. Everybody else was tortured. His dad was the head of the Navy. He was a terrible pilot, a total traitor, and he's anti-gun, open border. But before I go any further, we are running free shipping on everything at InfoWarsStore.com. From shortwave radios to high-quality non-GMO seeds to high-quality water filters to cut out the fluoride, the very best, the lowest prices, G2 filters from Pro Pure. InfoWarsStore.com, and we are selling out of Survival Shield Nason I9X2, the amazing uh, system that blocks the bad halogens, and Super Mill Vitality, Super Female Vitality. We got more Prostagard, one of the strongest, powerful, low price formulas for prostate health available, and it helps support our whole operation. So thank you all for your support. Shop with the good guys, InfoWarsLife.com, or 888 253 3139. Second hour is coming up. Call your friends and family. Tell them, tune in right now. I do intend to open the phones up in the last 30 minutes of the transmission, so I'll give that number out at the start of the next segment. I w I've already talked a lot about it, but I want to specifically drill in to the British royal family that is not British. It's like calling the Federal Reserve federal. It's not federal. It's predominantly owned by foreign banks. Earlier I mentioned this, and they found it in the Daily Mail. The Prince of Wales' 10-year battle to protect Dracula's home and his yearning for Transylvania. He's going around and re restoring the castles and stuff, just completely insane. Well, not really. I mean, that's, that's, that's where their whole lineage started. You just can't make this up. And, and then I get all these calls from talk show hosts going, you told the truth, I can't believe it, they're really Nazis. Why would you associate with me? I'm not mad at man cow or other people that sent me text messages or called me. If you thought I was lying about all this, or like it's exaggeration or it's entertainment, it's not, okay? These people are very dangerous. They're anti-human. I mean, it's in the news they're launching huge blimps to be at 100,000 feet to have listening devices and lasers and all sorts of surveillance tech. And they're announcing, yeah, your TVs do watch and listen to you. Everybody's calling me going, they're, they're admitting it, they're admitting it. Why, in my town, they're doing a test of taxes by the mile. and They're trying to pass a law in, 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 in Washington to do it. And, and they're, they're, they told my kids that I, they got to take shots. Or I, you said all this was coming. How'd you know? Because it's all admitted. That's what's so frustrating. And they intend to divide us along mindless racial lines and play up differences and, and, and really act like in total social class warfare that if somebody's got more money than you and they're middle class, you're entitled to it and make it racially based. 
and Obama now collecting personal data for secret race database. Housing database, mortgage database, school database, enrollment database, and then to have quotas on hiring and, and everything where they're like, you're going to hire a felon who's black. And I'm like, no, I'm not. You know, this person is an arsonist. They're like, no, well, or this, you know, this person robbed a bank. Yeah, you are. You're racist. No, I'm not going to hire somebody that's robbed a bank, whether they're black or white. And I assure you it's not because they're black. It's because they are a aggravated felon. But the White House, again, two weeks ago, remember they had the announcement. White House orders all cities integrated. You think, what do you mean, like the schools? No. No, through zoning, that's what Agenda 21 is. I was just talking to Kit Daniels, who's working up here on the weekend, doing a great job for Infowars.com. One of our writers, he said, yeah, I live in 78704. See, I've lived outside town, but I want to have a little place in town. So I got a little bitty piece of property because it happens to be close to my parents who live in town so my kids can be around them. Plus, my parents have a pool, which is just down the street, so I, don't, I can go over there and swim in their pool when I'm in town. So I look at the zoning, a single-family dwelling. I can build a little three-bedroom, uh, you know, uh, house there. I check the zoning. I get it. And, and the builders go, oh, yeah, that you didn't know in 78704 they will not allow you to put a, a gate up or any type of fence. And I went, excuse me? I'm going to put a gate up. I mean, there's some crime in this area. And I, I want to have my dogs out for real reason so they can run around the yard. And they go, no, they won't let us. They, and I went and checked, and it's true. Think about the country I live in. There's no law. It's not even a zoning rule that was passed. They just say it. Same deal. And the city says we want everyone to be close to each other. It's like a sick joke. <laughs> Your dogs are going to run around. Oh, get an instant fence or, or whatever it's called. I, I thought, you know, good fences make good neighbors. Benjamin Franklin said that, didn't he? All right, I want to give the number out before I get into more news and then take your calls. Uh, are you angry they got a secret illegal database tracking everything you do to create basically racial division and race war in the country? Uh, Senator Paul, the only guy to expose our government's funding ISIS and doing all this, the only guy to want to cut off foreign aid, the only guy who wants Planned Parenthood indicted and he wants to cut off their federal funding where you got to pay for abortions. Uh, with a new piece of legislation, Paul vows to push to defund Planned Parenthood next week. That's why I love Senator Rand Paul. Platinum asteroid potentially worth $5.4 trillion to pass Earth today. Asteroid has 90 million tons of platinum in its core. How Britain covered up the friendship between Hitler and Edward VIII. I'm going to get to that in a moment. That's the New York Post. Well, I told you how they covered it up. They made it about a divorce. And how he was going to marry an American woman. So that's why he had to step down. That's not, they just made that up for all the idiots. We're going to get to that. Putin. Russia's Putin orders formation of new military reserve corps. U.S. Navy prepared to ramp up Pacific presence to deter China. Let me get the John Bound report ready. How we're on the path of World War III. Marine storm Aussie Beach under China's gaze as tensions simmer. And here's the report. World War III granted a clear path by Obama. I want to get to this in a moment. And then Wesley Clark calls for interning disloyal Americans. We're going to play that report from MSNBC as well here in a moment. And then we'll get to the frivolous, mindless, brainwashing propaganda that is political correctness. I kid you not, I went to the New York Times yesterday online, and it was women who dye their armpit hair. This is how they show the power of being a woman. Not by inventing something or writing a book uh, or raising a great family or being a scientist but by being trendy and having green armpit hair. And I guess men shouldn't shave either because grooming yourself or even wearing clothing is an act, I guess, of male oppression. But but don't, 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 don't like go over to Saudi Arabia and get arrested trying to free women out of sex dungeons. No, no, no. Don't do that. 
just have green armpit hair and say that all Western men are rapists. So we're going to be talking about that as well and tying it into McCain uh, being attacked by Trump. But, I mean, Trump, I, I need to call Donald Trump up and just say, uh, look into his military records. He was a trustee at Hanoi Hilton. He had women delivered to him reportedly from our sources. He partied all the time. He was taken care of. Uh, he was an absolute traitor. And, I mean, it's on record he was a traitor. Why just say, oh, he got shot down and was, you know, failed so he's not a hero? Taking off from aircraft carriers is pretty heroic, especially back in the 60s. Uh, so Trump is really talking out of his rear end on this one for not going after him on the right attack. I mean, McCain is Keating 5. McCain is a anti-gun, open borders promoting guy caught meeting with ISIS and funding him. He is a piece of filth. Helping put us on the neocon Obama road to World War III. And here's John Bound's report. Media spin fail artist Susan Rice has done it again. You may recall how Rice declared on five mainstream media interview shows that the Benghazi attack was a result of rioting due to the horribly produced and nefarious film Innocence of the Muslims. What happened this week in Cairo, uh, in, in Benghazi, and, and many other parts of the region, a direct result of a heinous and offensive video uh, that was widely disseminated, that the U.S. government had nothing to do with. Or how about this doozy from the United States National Security Advisor? Sergeant Bergwald, there are a lot of questions about how he originally was captured and whether or not he had deserted, had left uh, his post. Is that going to be investigated? And if it's found that he did indeed uh, leave his post, will he be disciplined or has already paid the price? He served the United States with honor and distinction. Ms. Rice has stepped in it again. The sanctions will be suspended and Iran will begin to be able to access its frozen accounts around the world. What do we think they'll spend that money on? We think for the most part, they're going to need to spend it on the Iranian people and their economy, which is tanked. And in fact, we should expect that some portion of that money would go to the Iranian military and could potentially be used for the kinds of bad behavior uh, that we have seen in the region uh, up until now. This admission opens up the floodgates to scathing criticism of the highly unpopular deal the Obama administration, NATO dubbed a historic breakthrough, made with Iran. Over a hundred billion dollars worth of frozen Iranian assets are to be thawed due to the deal that has Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu deeming it a historic mistake. While the negotiators were closing the deal in Vienna, Iran's supposedly moderate president chose to go to a rally in Tehran. And at this rally, a frenzied mob burned American and Israeli flags and chanted, death to America, death to Israel. Now, this didn't happen four years ago. It happened four days ago. An official spokesman cited by the Saudi Arabian press agency also said, Iran should, with the conclusion of this accord, put her resources towards its development and amelioration of the condition of the Iranian people instead of provoking troubles which would generate certain reactions from countries in the region. But of course, the reckless hubris of the Obama administration would have us ignore this. <laughs> Ron Dermer, Israel's ambassador to the United States, outlined four major problems with the Iran deal. First, Iran now has a vast nuclear infrastructure and a history of deceiving IAEA inspectors for years. This is not the hoped for dismantle for dismantle deal in which the sanctions regime would be dismantled in exchange for the dismantling of Iran's nuclear weapons making capability. Second, the temporary restrictions placed on Iran expire in 10 years. Iran could be a hulking beast of terrorist activity by then. Third, the nuclear arms race will be galvanized in the most dangerous region on earth. And finally, the deal transfers to the Iranian regime's coffers $150 billion that is now frozen in foreign bank accounts. Iran has a $300 billion to $400 billion economy. A $150 billion cash bonanza for the regime is the equivalent of $8 trillion flowing into the U.S. Treasury. Tens of billions are likely to flow to the Shiite militias in Iraq, the Assad regime in Syria, the Houthis in Yemen, Hezbollah in Lebanon, and other Iranian terror proxies 
agencies in the region. Billions more will go to strengthening Iran's global terror network, which it has used to perpetrate terror attacks on five continents in more than 30 cities, from Buenos Aires to Burgas, Bulgaria to Bangkok. I continue to be much more concerned when it comes to our security with the prospect of uh, a nuclear weapon going off in Manhattan, which is part of the reason why uh, the United States, showing its continued international leadership, uh, has organized uh, a forum over the last several years that's been able to help eliminate uh, that threat in a consistent way. Folks, we are in big trouble. John Bound for Infowars.com. And they're starting wars with Russia as well. We're going to come back. I'm going to give the number out when we return and start taking your phone calls. Global destabilization is what will bring in the planetary government. Problem, reaction, solution. France's president, Hollande, proposes creation of Eurozone government. They already have an unelected bureaucracy that runs it in the elected EU parliament that has no authority. But they want to dissolve whatever was left of national sovereignty so that countries can be further squeezed and sucked dry. Bloomberg Business News, they say the answer is more power to the EU bureaucrats after what's happened in Greece. Even though they've already done another, quote, $50 billion bailout taking over their infrastructure, they're saying that that won't even help the country and people can't get their money out of their bank accounts because the private banks that run the EU are basically stealing the money. And why is it important to know history? Because you can look this up. The EU was a Nazi project. The European Union. So was forced inoculations and family planning. And people say, well, Hitler had some good ideas. He was a vegetarian. He loved his dog, Blondie. But Hitler didn't teach the West this. Hitler got it from the British royals, who were really German royals, who were really Transylvanian royals, as a system to dominate and control populations. The British Empire needed sciences to further divide and conquer strategies that Julius Caesar and others had used in Rome. And when you see a prison divided into racial groups, that's the model for the world, and that's why... They've gotten everybody to go along with political correctness in the name of equality. Then they flip it and make an absolute racial division, but then say, do as we say, or we'll politically come after you with fines and fees. This is the new social engineering we're going under. Whipping up the fury, whipping up the anger. George Soros funding people to go out and riot against the police as if that's going to reform problems with the police and the whole phony drug war. With the big banks caught openly shipping in the drugs. But since I mentioned the fact that they're really Transylvanian royalty, here's a short clip of Prince Charles actually admitting this. And again, they're British like the Federal Reserve is federal. They're patriotic like the Patriot Act is patriotic. They're the opposite. They're not even German. They're not even British. It just shows how everything is a lie. They're a parasitic group of criminals that have taken over the United Kingdom. But they have a nice PR name, the House of Windsor. That sounds real British, doesn't it? I have British lineage. These people are a joke. It's just, it's, it's ridiculous. Fish and chips is more British than these people. It's a joke. Now, let's go ahead and go to Prince Charles. The genealogy shows that I'm descended from Vlad the Impaler, you see. So I do have a bit of a stake in the country. As it were. That gets into him moving into Dracula Castle. So we're going to go over for TV viewers. Radio listeners can just Google this and you can find it. Who leaked footage of the Queen's Nazi salute? Major Hunt to find culprit who released home movie clip of her hiling Hitler with her uncle, the King of England. But her father was the same. Her husband, Prince Philip, is a German, Transylvanian. Hardly can speak English, just like Prince Bernhard. He was the prince over, over uh, Cyprus and Greece when he was a kid, but it was a monarchy. 
I mean, they just bring some guy from Greece. He's not even Greek. He's, just, he's a global royal. They just bring him in. And they're so upset. And then there's images that are in the New York Post from this release that show Edward VIII, the King of England, with Hitler. Not just a classic one with him in the back of a car, but, but them lined up at the eagle's nest up there at Hitler's vacation house and others. And again, I just can't believe how illiterate historically even other talk show hosts are because they're all calling me going, I can't believe you're right. I thought you were making this up. You thought I was making it up. Why? Because the Brits fought Hitler? The Irish, the Scots, they all fought Hitler? They set up Hitler as a project and then set him up to bring down Europe. Lord Milner wrote about it in the 20s, how they would create a strong man and then launch Germany against Europe and then in would ride the British Empire because the British Empire was at war with Germany economically because the Austrian-Hungarian Empire was economically taking over the world through soft power and they couldn't deal with it. So there was a lot of double dealing and back and forth and uh, the deputy Fuhrer famously parachuted in, Rudolf Hess over, over England, into, into one of the king's palaces with the treaty. They locked him up in the Tower of London for the rest of his life. They had a peace treaty and a secret pact to take over France, take over Poland, take over Austria. Even to, later in the secret pact was to attack the Soviet Union, and they just set the Germans up. But what do you expect from Count Dracula's lineage? Double dealing, double crossing, absolute manipulation, absolute fraud, absolute corruption. Absolute dishonor. So the Germans were set up at every level. Just like they've turned ISIS loose, the Free Syrian Army now to take over the whole Middle East, destabilize and bring it back to the Stone Age. That's the plan. The palace, the taxpayer-funded palace. Oh. We laugh at Kim Jong-un of North Korea. Why not laugh at these jokes? Palace Scold's Son, newspaper for publishing Queen's Nazi salute. See how they turn it around? It's racist to expose the Nazi salute. How dare you? How dare you? Once again, Prince Philip demonstrates his hatred of humanity. Who do you sponge off? The Duke of Edinburgh. That's the Queen's husband, the uh, Romanian prince who once expressed his wish to come back as a virulent disease and decimate humanity, has again revealed, this is this week, his contempt for the lower classes in Britain. During a visit to East London Community Center, the longest-serving consort of the reigning monarch asked a group of women, who do you sponge off? As an aide feebly attempted to backtrack, saying there was context to the remark, he said the insult was in regard to sponge cake. The royals are unusually circumspect, but do not openly display their contempt for the commoners. But Philip, now 94, as of late, lets it all hang out. Less than a week ago, he told a uh, photographer, just take the effing picture during a photo session for the Battle of Britain anniversary. The royals have shown their true colors numerous times. Philip may want to look at his own sponging before berating the commoners. The Windsors grabbed 300 million a year of British public coffer. She has 6,600 million acres of land. I mean, just all stolen, all big fat parasites, but they wear. We make fun of like villagers wearing big headdresses. These people wear big headdresses. They're total jokes. The public is illiterate about reading, writing, and arithmetic, basic business. Our industrial base is gone. Our IQs are physically dropping. Our test scores the lowest in the world. But we know how to obsess over race. We know how to be offended. We know how to be entitled. This is how we've been conquered. Well, I'm here to try to wake folks up and break the paradigm of control. I'm your host, Alex Jones. The news websites are Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. And I cannot stress to you enough how much the establishment is trying to block everything we do. The system is absolutely trying to shut down every outlet that isn't controlled by them. 
it's undebatable that there's been a war on the press that's intensified under Obama, that there's been a war on whistleblowers, a war on free speech, a war on freedom worldwide. We're going out of hundreds of years of progress into a new age of corruption and social engineering, and it's time to say no to all of it. Some of the news on Infowars.com, Charlie Ebdo will no longer draw the prophet Muhammad. So there you go, that attack on free speech. That's just some of the news up on Infowars.com. Obama pushes to extend gun background checks to Social Security. That's right, seeking tighter controls on firearm purchases, the Obama administration is pushing to ban Social Security beneficiaries from owning guns if they lack the mental capacity to manage their own affairs. So if you are disabled and on Social Security for a bad back, whatever, you just can't have it. That is just unprecedented news up on Infowars.com. It's all outside of law. It's just being done. I mentioned this, so I'm going to play it, then we're going to go to Karen in Arizona and um, Joshua, Russ, Anthony, Antonio, Salath, am I pronouncing that right? Salih and uh, Dwayne and others. Now, before we go any further, uh, briefly, here is the clip, since I mentioned, I don't want to make a statement like this and not play the clip, of Wesley Clark calling for interning disloyal Americans. Now, understand something. If somebody says they want to attack innocent people in the United States, that's a premeditated call to commit a crime. And it was a crime in this country with the knee-jerk response to Pearl Harbor to lock up over 100,000 Japanese Americans, many of which have been here two, three generations, in forced labor camps because they were such good workers and so well-behaved. I mean, look at Japan. When things get worse, they get better. And you can say what you want about Japanese stereotypes, but very low crime rate, very honorable people. And there were thousands of Japanese fighters in Europe, Japanese Americans, whose families were in camps in California and other states, slave labor while they were fighting. I tell you, that takes a lot of self-control. I don't think I'd be doing that. They put some German Americans in camps. That was World War II. But believe me, they're not going to put radical Muslims in any of these FEMA camps. They admit the FEMA camps that the Army admits are for the American people will process Social Security numbers, you name it. They say for gun owners, veterans, returning veterans. They're going to cut the Social Security off. They're going to cut the veterans' benefits off. They're going to stage false flags, in my view, and blame it on patriots, and then put people in forced labor camps. So a lot of good old boys are like, good, lock the Muslims up. They're going to lock you up. You're the target during the takeover. They plan to come after the guns, everything. It's bipartisan. Look at the screw jobs they've already gotten through. Look at all the preparations. So let's go ahead and go to this report with Wesley Clark on MSNBC. Well, we've got to identify um, the people who are most likely to be radicalized. We've got to cut this off at the beginning. There are always a certain number of young people who are... Our government in NATO helped create the Free Syrian Army and allow them to recruit worldwide under Wahhabis, under Saudi Arabia and Qatar, and created these groups. The birthing of this was Western funded. They supplied the blood. They supplied the treasure. And now they're going to use the threat of it saying it's not Islamic, but we need to start disappearing people. This is how they prime the pump for Hillary's fund camps. Let's go back to it number of young people who are alienated. They don't get a job, they lost a girlfriend, their family doesn't feel happy here. And we can watch the signs of that and there are members of the community who will reach out to those people and bring them back in and encourage them to look at their blessings here. But I do think on a national policy level, we need to look at, um, at what self-radicalization means because we are at war with um, uh, this group of terrorists. They do have an ideology. In World War II, if uh, someone supported Nazi Germany at the expense of the United States... Hey, uh, they would be given hundreds of billions in the aggregate of welfare, the British family. What would happen if you supported the Nazis? If you were Ford or GM plants, we couldn't bomb them? My grandfathers couldn't bomb them? 
or uh, factories in the north here in Vietnam to get the war going? Because the truth is, the evil is right here manipulating all this. Let's go back to more of Wesley Clark's BS. Well, we didn't say that was freedom of speech. Uh, we, we put him in a, in a camp. We, they were prisoners of war. So uh, if these people are radicalized and they don't support the United States and they're disloyal to the United States as a matter of principle, fine, that's their right. It's our right and our obligation to segregate them from the normal community for the duration of the conflict. And I think we're going to have to increasingly get tough on this, not only in the United States, but our allied nations like right. Britain and Germany and France are going to have to. So they're gearing up the clash of civilizations out of which comes the world government. Now, I want to go to this first caller, Karen in Arizona, because she wants to bring up McCain and the MIA report. Yes, there are two things. If you remember, thank you, Alex, for taking my call. If you remember 1995 when they had that MIA report, yes. who fought the hardest was John, to seal it uh, forever was John McCain. N number two, when my husband got polio in 1971, uh, we had some hard times because, and uh, I went to, when I went to get some help, who uh, we had, uh, I hate to say it, but there was some racial profiling in that, in in California. And I had to dress up with old clothes in order to make me look like I needed the money, which I don't need the money, didn't need the money, it was the food stamps I was going for. Understand how does that have to do with McCain? Because McCain was part of the Keating Five. McCain's anti-gun, pro-open border. He's basically Bernie Sanders as a Republican, uh, but he acts like he's hawkish, helping fund ISIS. And then it came out that he was a trustee at the Hanoi Hilton and lived in the lap of luxury with parties, women, fine meals, while everybody else was basically tortured. And, and people that were there with McCain have gone public about that. So that's why he should be attacked. I appreciate your call. Uh, not just, oh, he's no hero with a half-baked statement. He got shot down. He got captured. There was two separate things I was mentioning. First, McCain, and then... Okay, ma'am, thank you so much. I understand your points now. Thank you. Let's jam in one more call. Anthony in New York, you're on the air. Welcome. Alex, how are you? Good. Go ahead. All right. It's about Pope Francis. We all know that he's pro-carbon tax. He's pro-New World Order. But do you know he's pro-evolution as well? I want to read you a quote what he said on the um, speaking to the uh, Pontifical Academy of Science. Pope Francis said that the Big Bang and evolution do not contradict the intervention of God as a creator. Rather, it requires it. So all those people that believe in this false prophet should really wake up. So this guy's a phony and he's a, he's a sellout to the establishment. Well, there's no doubt about that. Uh, I don't want to cut you off because I went to you late. You want to say something else when you come back? Are you done, Anthony? Bye, Mike. All right, yeah, we'll we'll hold you over, and we're going to come back. Look, it's not about Catholic bashing, because I don't get into that. This guy is promoting a planetary government, carbon taxes. And I remember when he first got in, he said, stop talking about abortion. So I guess he wants to keep selling the baby parts. You know, I apologize to the lady that called earlier when I was cutting her off, not knowing what she was getting to. It's my fault. I go to calls late, then I want to go fast, and then I jam-pack everybody in, and I apologize. So this week, with the weekday broadcast, I pledge to take some large blocks out to just take calls and give everybody some time. Because the callers are great when they have time to articulate what they want to say. And we'll be back tomorrow, 11 a.m. Central, Infowars.com, with the broadcast across the country. And I cannot stress enough how they want to shut us up, how they want to stop this transmission. Tell your friends and family about the show, however you listen it is so important to share your PrisonPlanet.tv memberships or to share the free link to Infowars.com forward slash show where the radio show is simulcast in living color video and audio feeds. The power of the people can override the globalist if you take action. I want to go to Russ, Joshua, Antonio, and others before we end this broadcast. But Anthony, I could spend all day on the Pope. I mean, he just is diametrically opposed to what other popes have said, so something's going on here. But he sure sounds like basically Mao Zedong meets Fidel Castro. And I don't get into preacher's interpretation of how we got here. 
I don't buy into the religion of evolution, Darwinism, eugenics. That's been proven to not be true. A lot of preachers' interpretation of the earth being 6,000 years old, I don't even agree with that either. So I'm not mad at folks that don't believe in how preachers interpret the Bible. I do know we were created by an amazing God in, their, in God's image and that we're an epic species. But yes, the Pope is now going against mainline Catholic dogma and he's not criticizing the Planned Parenthood being caught selling baby parts and harvesting organs. I mean, this pope is deadly uh, in how bad he is. And I wonder what more he's going to get away with. I mean, people have got to criticize this. What do you say? Well, I think people are very ignorant. Unfortunately, they believe this guy is, um, is, a, is a godly um, person, but he really isn't. He's a, he's a he's a real he's the false prophet that Revelation said to a T. Brother, he sure fits the bill. I mean, when you've got a world leader who's got a billion plus followers talking like Fidel Castro, we're in deep trouble. And uh, from one of the richest institutions in the world, criticizing the middle class for having a nice dinner. I mean, it's social warfare. The ultra rich have robbed the planet. They've got to get social warfare going on. Between the middle class and the poor, or they're screwed. So, Vatican, give up all your wealth or shut your face. Thank you so much, Anthony. Russ in Buffalo, New York, with an exciting story, I'm told. Russ, welcome. Hey, sir, Alex. Can hey, you hear me? Yes, sir. Oh, I just called, called in from uh, FEMA Region 2 up here in former New York to let you know a good story that I had over the weekend. I went to a concert wearing the Live Free or Die uh, Paul Revere shirt that Infowars.com on the back. I've had 10, count them, 10 people, other listeners, come up to me and talk about the truth movement and Infowars, and it was just a very positive experience. And I wanted to remind your listeners to wear their colors because people are waking up in mass. Well, it's not hype. That when you wear an Infowars.com shirt and walk down the street in any city in the world, you're going to run into 9 out of 10 people that recognize you are going to be pro-liberty. You will run into some enemies as well. Uh, but I have gone to concerts, country concerts, rock concerts, uh, you name it, wearing Infowars, uh, live free or die. It's funny you mentioned that, the red one with the snake on it especially, and get mobbed. Uh, folks should really experience it, and this is kind of product placement, your call. It's not a stage call, uh, but it might as well be because this is the reality. We have 10% off all the T-shirts at InfoWarsStore.com right now. And then, of course, there's Made1776.com as well with all the Made uh, in America apparel. Uh, but when you wear a Molon Lambe shirt, when you wear an InfoWars.com shirt, you will find out how many people are out there that are awake. And then you can get their name and number and form an organization in your area. So absolutely, that's what it's all about. And your purchase of the shirts funds our operation. So I want to salute everybody. Uh, I, I hope you hooked up with some of them uh, and uh, you know can now get politically involved. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Anything else you want to add? Um, no, nope, that was it. I just wanted to share the good news out here. That's all. God bless you, brother. Very exciting. Yeah, uh, Dave Mustaine invited me to a Megadeth concert out at the Formula One racetrack about two years ago. And I don't know what's going on, but it's like half the Megadeth fans are listeners. I mean, I got mobbed. Plus, I was wearing a Live Free or Die shirt uh, that's just in the general InfoWars store area, if you want to pull those up, in the, in the general t-shirt area. And it's, it just says Live Free or Die, Liberty or Death, and it's a red snake. The Gadsden flag and it is just insanely, insanely popular. And people really resonate with it. Okay, let's go ahead and go to more of your phone calls. Let's talk to Joshua in California. You're on the air. Go ahead. I hope I uh, can articulate what I want to say because I know I won't have enough time to say everything. But I want to just kind of jump right into uh, people that call themselves Christians but are definitely not. They have this idea in their head that somehow Christ did away with the law. But if that were so true, then murder would be something that would be okay. But they know Well, Christ said it had not come to God. remove the law, but to fulfill it. And so anybody that's read the Bible will know that. 
Most Christians now are government-run bots who follow government doctrines. So we should feel sorry for them. But I'm not up here like a Pharisee saying I'm the greatest Christian around. I will oppose killing babies and selling their body parts. And I, and I just want to know, where are the other Christians? Well, they're hiding out in mega churches, feeling good about themselves. The, the Christian happy hour aspect of this, what I'm talking about is being sealed in their hearts, but not in their minds. Understanding, like, you know how next year they're having this national ID thing coming out. Well, already, even just having an ID, say you want to travel to another country, you still need a passport to go to another country. When that is completely against God's laws to have those graven images to interact with these corporations. Well, I mean, Revelation says you got to have it to buy or sell, and they're now coming out with all this, and then they exempt the illegals. Uh, so it's a great point you make. And now the TSA announced starting next year, Real ID, you won't be able to board a plane if your state doesn't comply with Real ID and track everything you do. So, yes, sir, it's here, Mark of the Beast. And you won't hear these whore churches talking about it because they're drunk on the blood of the saints and the children. And you could tell the average preacher to drink a big fetid bowl of baby blood. They'd probably do it if they were told it was liberal or trendy. Antonio in FEMA Region 9, you're on the year. Go ahead. Thanks for holding. Hey, Alex. Uh, you know what? Uh, all I can say is the last two calls were, have been on point, And I appreciate your show. God bless you. Uh, your you know what, your Sunday shows are off the hook. The weekdays, I love the weekday show, but Sunday, there's something different about the Sunday show. Yeah, I'm not a morning person. I mean, I've always gotten up really early, but I'm more awake by the afternoon. Yeah, it's just, it, it, you come out with fire, like, whoa, like, I go out of my way to listen to your show because it's that damn good. Well, thanks for putting up with me, brother. We tried. Oh, I dig it. But anyways, uh, I want to get to my point. I wanted to touch on some of the things the past two callers talked about, but they did a good job, so I don't have to do that. So my buddy, he texted me uh, an article today that was on Yahoo, and it was uh, Wall Street is picking its candidates in the 2016 presidential election. And, of course, who, who did they have? Hillary Clinton and Jeb Bush. And Rand Paul, he will only get in if you sell the soul. You know, honestly, you know, like, I would love for Rand Paul to get in. And I will go with uh, what Steve Quill talked about, that there is no political solution to a spiritual problem. And that's absolutely true. No political uh, person is going to solve all our problems, but it can help. But also, going with that, you know that we're going to most likely we're, we are going to have. I'm still going to fight, and you're going to fight all of the truth movement, all the info warriors out there. We're all going to fight. But it is about getting our heart right. You're absolutely right. God bless you. But if our heart is right, we will then oppose corruption openly. So. It's not by works, but if your heart's in the right place, you're going to have the works. I got to go to one more call. Sorry to Dwayne. Salee in FEMA Region 2, you got about 30 seconds. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, all right. I'll try to make my point as quickly as possible um, about the Kuwait shooter. Um, so there was a bomb blast that happened in Kuwait that uh, that killed a bunch of uh, Shia, uh, a bunch of Shias out there. But then literally that same night, a lot of Sunnis and Shias came together and prayed in congregation, and the mosque was packed later on that same night. That's good. So it, uh, it, I found it kind of weird that later on that same day, or later on maybe a couple of days later, then there's a Kuwaiti shooter uh, going and killing everybody, uh, showing or going and killing American, you know, trying to make Kuwait look bad. When a lot Who knows? It could be staged. Other stuff's been staged before. We'll look into it. God bless you. We'll cover it more tomorrow, 11 a.m.